so pay attention. Hello everybody, uh, it is my pleasure to be back here tonight talking about Frédéric Chopin. Frédéric Chopin has been my first love, the first important composer that I played as a child and Chopin will always have a very special place in my heart. When I was a kid, I had all his pictures on the wall. You know, instead of having pop singers around, I just had Chopin. Chopin had uh, um, a very good point in his life that he grew up in Warsaw, surrounded by uh, the young um, people from the aristocracy. He had kind of a premonition, like if I leave, uh, my country, I will never come back. When he left Poland, his friends accompanied him to the uh, coach, you know, to, to go, and they gave him a bowl with um, Polish soil so that he could carry the soil with him when he would go abroad. And we will see later on what will happen to this soil. Chopin would always be uh, kind of introverted, would always hate to play in front of big audiences and uh, would prefer to play in salons with few friends. That's where he felt at ease. And um, we have to see that his uh, piano playing is uh, full of colors, full of nuances. And this is a characteristic of his uh, music. Now, this was very different from what people were used to listen. That's why, you know, like he was not that well accepted at the beginning. And uh, we have to um, uh, see that Chopin was kind of self-taught. He didn't study with great teachers. But because of that, he was able to develop his own technique at the piano, which was really new at that time and uh, something that uh, will change the way of writing at the piano. In the classical time we would have accompaniments more like with a closed hand. Now Chopin starts writing something like that which uses more space. Now, another thing very important in his uh, thinking is that uh, um, the hand for him has five fingers, of course, but all the fingers are different. While before they try to have all the fingers equal by studying a lot and a lot of technique, Chopin says, no, just let's use the fingers for what they are. If you have a weak finger, let's use it to produce, to produce a soft sound. If you have a stronger finger, this is for louder sound. And this will take us to using very new fingerings at the piano. For example, Chopin starts using the thumb on black keys starts using the crossing of the fifth finger on top of the thumb and vice versa. Um, these are all unique things. Um, sometimes if he wanted to play like a strong melody, would use like one finger to obtain the same strong sound. Also, sometimes we would cross the fifth finger with the third or fourth finger. This is very typical in Chopin music, but this is something absolutely new for that time. interesting story. It's the fall of year 1836 and uh, Chopin was invited to a party by his friend Franz Liszt and uh, uh, his lover Marie de Gould. So he goes to Hotel de France in Paris and uh, here he meets a woman, Georges Sand. She was uh, a writer. She was very famous. She was older than him a woman who used to wear pants in the salons and smoke cigars and this was something 
absolutely not allowed at that time. So kind of a revolutionary. Now the two meet and it's very interesting to see the impressions that each of them receives from the other. Chopin sees George Sand and uh, tells a friend, hmm, this George Sand, is she a woman? I start doubting about this. And George Sand uh, on her side tells her friend, this Monsieur Chopin, is he a boy or a girl? You know, like this, you know, roles were not very well defined here. Yeah. So anyway, after two years, the two are finally together because uh, um, George Sand had two, uh, a son and a daughter and uh, the son was sick. So the doctors uh, um, told him to spend the winter in a warmer climate. And Chopin was also sick, you know, he had tuberculosis, so his health was not great. They found a place, it was like a monastery in Val de Mosa. This was a, uh, an empty monastery, huge place. They uh, found their way there and uh, they started living in this huge monastery. Outside, of course, uh, it could be sunny, bright, uh, warmer climate but this monastery could be also scary sometimes all these empty spaces you know and he used to write this is a very weird place you can uh, scream and nobody hears you and it's silent all over his uh, way of composing is very modern for the time very very modern so listen to the harmonies even though he uses a very simple melody on top he works a lot with the harmonies down here and uh, you know like sometimes i discuss this piece with jazz pianists and they say it's jazz already there are a lot of seeds of jazz in this music <laughs> It is told that one day um, George Sand uh, left with the kid to go with the, with the kids to go shopping uh, in Palma de Mallorca. So all of a sudden Chopin is alone at the monastery and starts a big big rain. So George Sand is delayed to go home. It took her several hours to make it back. And when she got back, she found Chopin at the piano. He was composing, but he was uh, almost in an hallucinating state of mind. And the minute he saw her, he turned and said, oh my God, I thought you were all dead. And I felt dead myself. I felt I was drowning in a lake and I could feel, could feel like cold drops of water on my chest. And uh, he was composing this piece. Now, what happens with George Sand? Actually, after seven years, they started not getting on well anymore, mostly because uh, uh, George Sand's uh, uh, son, Maurice, started being uh, uh, obnoxious towards Chopin, and so, you know, like, the relationship ended. Chopin uh, found himself alone. His health was deteriorating. He didn't have uh, even the strength to teach or to play nor to compose, you know. Uh, so uh, we would see that he would die on October 17 of 1849. He was only 39 years old. He never got back to Poland. So that's, uh, you know, what I said at the beginning. He had this premonition and it was actually true. So when uh, um, he was buried, his uh, body is in the cemetery of Père Lachaise in Paris. You remember that bowl of Polish soil? That soil would be put on top of his coffin so that he could finally be reunited to his uh, country. We have to say that his heart, though, rests in the church of Warsaw. So, you know, finally his heart could be reunited to his beloved Poland. Well, thank you very much for being with us today.
I hope you enjoyed this wonderful music by a great, great composer. Now continue following us on lessonface.com slash great composers. We will be back in March with a new uh, lesson on an Italian composer, Antonio Vivaldi. We will discuss his four seasons. So beautiful, beautiful music from my home country, Italy. Have a good evening. Ciao.